Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you for watching. Today we'll be doing the second part of biological classification and we'll only be covering kingdom protista today. So yeah, let's get started. So first let's go through what we did last class. So what we did was learn about the basic classification, five kingdom classification and other two kingdom, three kingdom classification and three domain classification followed by kingdom monera. And we learned that in Kingdom Monera, we have single-celled prokaryotic organisms. With that, let's continue with Kingdom Protista. Now, in Kingdom Protista, all the organisms are single-celled, but they are single-celled eukaryotic organisms. Matlab, they have a well-defined nucleus, they have cell organelles, okay? And all other characteristics of a eukaryotic cell, alright? But... Uh, the boundaries for protista are not well defined. What they mean by this is there are many organisms in protista which can be included in other groups but they're still included in protista due to some other reasons because they're unicellular eukaryotic organisms. So they don't have well defined boundaries that means that organisms in protista can be a bridge between plants and animals and monera. So yeah. Now, Protista, let's just start with the first classification, Christophytes, okay? Christophytes, it includes organisms which are known as diatoms or golden algae or desmids. It's important that you remember all three names. And also, one more important thing is that all Protistans are mostly aquatic, so they can either be freshwater or marine. And now, Christophytes are mostly freshwater as well as marine organisms all right and they float passively in water currents that means that they're planktonic planktons are those organisms which float on water bodies okay and these are photosynthetic that is they get their nutrition by utilizing the energy of the sun now the key point you need to know in christophytes is the cell wall this cell wall is made up of silica and silica is a very indestructible material. So, this cell wall is like you have a soap box, right? So, soap box is like this, two shells like this, which you keep soap. This is the cell wall hai. and this is very indestructible. It it can live for years and years without getting destructed. So, this cell wall, na, it gets deposited in whatever, uh, whatever habitat they are living in. So, this cell wall is also known as diameter diatomaceous earth and it's very gritty matlab coarse in nature and this is used for various commercial purposes and ye commercial purposes either list kiye hai, like polishing filtration of oils and syrups etc and either a call key point hai, diatoms are known as the chief producers on the ocean chief producers ye yaad rakhna because it's come in many exams theek hai? now we go for the second classification that is dinoflagellates Okay, these are marine. So I told you that protistans are usually aquatic organisms. We have that Christophytes are uh, freshwater or marine. Dinoflagellates are only marine and they are photosynthetic too. And these have many pigments in them like yellow pigment, green pigment, red pigment and depending on that pigment, their color is there. And its cell wall like uh, diametitious diatomaceous earth my god um usme silica hai right in christophytes similarly dinoflagellates may the cell wall is made up of cellulose plates like in plants plants maybe cell wall is made up of cell cellulose okay and these has two flagella flagella are structures which are present in a cell which are mostly used for its movement so flagella kaise hote hain you can see an example of a flagella here this is not a dinoflagellate but this is a flagella. So flagella, is ka flagella, do flagella hote hai. Ek longitudinal, that is in this way, in the vertical direction and one is a transverse flagella. So there are two flagella. And there is also a furrow between cell walls. This furrow is basically a structure which is used mostly in cell division. Okay. And is me key point kya hai? Dinoflagellates me key point ye hai ki they form a particular phenomena called red tide. So, you know, they contain pigments, right? So, these dinoflagellates, when they are on the seashore, they excessively divide 
and they divide so much that the tides start looking red and this phenomena is called red tide but this is also harmful for the marine life because these organisms tend to release many toxins which uh, do not let these marine organisms and other uh, organisms living there survive now uh, the example for uh, the red tide causing organism is gonia lux and this is usually asked in neat now the third one is euglenoids so euglenoids are freshwater so dinoflagellates were marine and euglenoids are freshwater organisms they're found in rivers and stagnant water and cell wall they don't have a cell wall but instead they have a proteinaceous rich layer called pellicle and it's it provides it a lot of flexibility and iske bhi do flagella hai the only difference is dinoflagellates mein flagella was one longitudinal one transverse but isme one flagella is long and one flagella is short and these are photosynthetic but only when sunlight is there and when there is no sunlight they behave, they behave as heterotrophs so heterotrophs matlab they depend on other smaller organisms for their nutrition and you know the plants have several pigments in them for performing photosynthesis like chlorophyll a chlorophyll b keratinoid pigments similarly euglenoids also have the same kind of pigments as seen in higher plants to maine pehle bhi bola tha ki protistins are they don't have any given boundary that's why this euglenoids is more like a connecting link between uh, protista and plantae now let's go to slime molds slime molds are the first saprophytic protists saprophytes matlab kya they depend on dead and decaying matter for their nutrition matlab they grow between decaying twigs and everything and they absorb the organic content present in them and isse wo unko nutrition aur energy milti hai theek hai and there are uh, two methods of reproduction for slime molds one is in favorable conditions so favorable conditions may they form like a huge aggregate aggregate is a you know composition of many such slime molds which spreads to different different areas they can be as long as uh, i mean they can be measured in feet so plasmodium karke the a structure is formed and aggregation is formed under suitable conditions suitable matlab there is no extremity but when conditions are unfavorable matlab uh, unfavorable is any kind of conditions which just, uh, which impairs the survival ability of slime molds so in conditions mein plasmodium differentiates differentiation ka meaning hai ki it takes up a new function so it differentiates to form fruiting bodies fruiting bodies are special structures which bear spores on them and spores are reproductive structures we been learning since very long that spores are dispersed and they cause reproduction so these spores have a indestructible wall almost resistant to any kind of unfavorable condition so jab ye disperse hote hain they get deposited at one place and they germinate and they form further slime molds theek hai and they are dispersed by air currents they are very light in nature so they are dispersed by air currents now the last and most important classification of protistins that is protozoans protozoans can be heterotrophic protozoans can be parasitic they can be pathogenic so these are mostly related to animals but they are not animals okay and protozoans ke there are about four to five categories given in ncert first one is amoeboid protozoans so these they live in fresh water ya sea water or even moist soil so they move and they capture food by using pseudopodia ab yaar pseudopodia to tumne pehle se seekh rakha hai they are false feet so amoeba extends its false feet it engulfs the food particle and it digests it inside and they also have silica shells on their surface just like cryptophytes and example is ant amoeba or simply amoeba okay now flagellated protozoans i already told you what a flagella is so basically protozoans with the flagella in them are flagellated protozoans they can be either free living that is they don't depend on other organisms or parasitic that is they depend on another host for their nutrition so parasitic forms they are mostly pathogenic 
और तुमने टेंथ क्लास में वाई डू वी फॉल इन चैप्टर में सीखा है ट्राइपानोसोमा सो ट्राइपानोसोमा कॉजेज स्लीपिंग सिकनेस एंड देर सेवरल अदर ऑर्गेनिजम्स इंक्लूडेड इन दिस विच कॉज काला आजार एक्सेट्रा विच आर फ्लैजलेटेड प्रोटोजोन्स नाउ सीलिएटेड प्रोटोजोन्स सो सीलिया इज समथिंग जस्ट लाइक अ फ्लैजला दे हैव द सेम बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर बट देर डिफरेंट सीलिया मतलब इफ आई टेल यू इन ह्यूमन बॉडी तुम्हारे ट्रकिया में तुम्हारे फैलोपियन ट्यूब में यू हैव सीलिया दे हेल्प इन मूवमेंट ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर इन साइड द बॉडी सो सीलिएटेड प्रोटोजोन्स आई शो यू द डायग्राम हेयर टू गिव यू द एग्जाम्पल एग्जाम्पल इज पैरामेशन सो दे हैव अ लॉट ऑफ सिलिया हेयर एंड दे हैव अ गलट गलट इज अ काइंड ऑफ कैविटी तो ये सिलिया क्या करता है इट पुशेस ऑल द फूड फ्रॉम आउटसाइड इन टू द गलट फॉर फर्दर डाइजेशन ओके एग्जाम्पल इज पैरामेशियम एज वी ऑलरेडी सॉ एंड लास्ट इज स्पोरोजोन्स एंड स्पोरोजोन्स आर दोज ऑर्गेनिजम्स दे हैव दिस इन्फेक्शियस स्पोर लाइक स्टेज मतलब इस स्पोर वाले स्टेज में दे कैन कॉज इन्फेक्शन एंड वन ऑफ द मोस्ट फेमस स्पोरोजोन्स इज प्लास्मोडियम एंड प्लास्मोडियम क्या कॉज करता है मलेरिया सो लोगों को लगता है कि मस्किटो कॉजेज मलेरिया मस्किटो सिर्फ वैक्टर है एक्चुअल कॉज फॉर मलेरिया इज प्लास्मोडियम एंड इट इज बेसिकली अ पैथोजन सो दैट्स इट प्रोटोजोन्स एंड प्रोटिस्टा में बस इतना ही है सो वील डन विथ टूडेज क्लास एंड थैंक यू सो मच फॉर लिसनिंग एंड विल बी कमिंग अप विद द नेक्स्ट वीडियो दैट इज जस्ट फंगाई so i'll keep you guys posted and drop in some suggestions on which unit you want to see next i was thinking of human physiology so yeah thank you so much for watching like share and subscribe and send it to all your friends thank you